please rise. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And good morning to you all. Amen. And to all of you who are watching this morning, wherever you are, uh, it's kind of like snowing a teeny little bit here. So if to the group in Hawaii, I envy you this morning. <laughs> My friends, it's the first Sunday of Advent, and with that in mind, we begin the service of blessing our Advent wreath. My brothers and sisters, today we begin the season of Advent. We open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives and into our homes. The candles of the wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin, to lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. We listen to the words of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you at the harvest, as they make merry when dividing spoils. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Priest forever, and Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast, forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice both now and forever. The response to each petition is, Come, Lord Jesus. Christ came to bring us salvation as promised to come again. We pray that he may always be ready to welcome him. Come, that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love. Come, Lord that the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. Come, that this wreath may remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ that the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the people. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Let your blessing come upon us as we light the first candle of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise for salvation. May he come quickly and without delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Some captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. And let us pray. 
Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure, this is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, to o, you Lord, o Lord, I lift, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O, to you, o Lord, Lord, I lift, I lift up my soul. soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, to you O Lord, Lord, I lift I up lift my, my soul. soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the glory and the honor. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish, distraught at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming on the earth. The powers in the heavens will be shaken. 
After that, men will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with great power and great glory. When these things happen, stand up straight, raise your heads. Your ransom is near at hand. Be on guard lest your spirits become bloated with indulgences and drunkenness, worldly cares. The great day will suddenly close in on you like a trap. The day I speak of will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. So be on the watch. Pray constantly for the strength to escape whatever is in prospect, to stand secure before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. When people tell me, friends, that um, they might be over for dinner or they might just be in your company, and they say, well, we have to go home because we're leaving on a trip on Monday and uh, it's Friday and we have to pack. Two days? You take two days to pack. I can pack for a week or two in 15 minutes. That's it. So I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I'm going to tell you how I do it. You, you, this, this is information you will not get in any church today, this morning, on the first Sunday of Advent. So you get out of bed in the morning. You go in the bathroom. I brush my teeth. When I'm done, the toothbrush and the toothpaste get thrown right in the middle of the bed. Got that? Okay. Then I take my high blood pressure pills. That's because of all of you. And I take those, just kidding, of course. Um, and I take those, to, and then I throw that middle of the bed. And then I take the shower, soap and shampoo. I encase that middle of the bed. Okay, are you following me? Okay, good. And then when I, I get dressed and I put on the socks, I take however many pair I need for how many days I throw those in the bed. And then I put on the pants, the shirt, and however many days or whatever, I put all that on the bed. So by the end of my morning ablutions, everything I need is already on the bed because I know that's what I do when I get up in the morning and it's all there. Then it goes in the bag. Done. Finished. Did you all get that? It's so easy that way, you see, to prepare. And I, I share that little bit of wisdom with you because Advent is the time of preparation for Christmas that is not synonymous, as I say every year, with the 30 shopping days before Christmas. Advent is a time for us to open our hearts and our minds to uh, the coming of Christ. And we know that's already happened. It's come and it's gone. But like all the other celebratory days during the year, this is a time to prepare for the great celebration, which of course is, is Christmas. And, and this particular reading, which is very apocalyptic, the language is very high-minded, and um, it's, uh, you would think it's kind of strange that it would, would really be here, but there are bits and pieces of it that make perfect sense especially at the end, because when you look at these, um, these readings, Jesus Christ always gets the last word. Isn't that the truth? He always does. He's always, the last line or so comes the zinger, and it's, it's right there. Pray constantly. That's the first part. So I think Advent is a time to take a look at our prayer life, not just for Advent, but every single day of the year. Do we pray enough? I know that I don't. And I don't think any of us really probably do. I don't know what enough is really in terms of, you know, as often as possible. I always mention the Thanksgiving prayer in the morning when we leave the house, which I think is important. Thank you, Lord, for my spouse. Thank you for my brother, my sister. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my job. Lots of things to give thanks for. It takes all of a minute and a half. And then there's grace before meals. Are we, we adequately thanking God for the sustenance that maintains us every day? And then are we somehow taking a little time to ourselves and just kind of walking outside and, and just being alone and just saying some prayers? Or, you know, years ago they used to call it centering prayer. It was a big 70s term. But it makes sense, centering prayer, so that we're really concentrating on what's ahead of us. Because every one of you in the room, all of our lives are torn in different directions by different responsibilities, right? Whether you're a, you're a, house, a housewife or you have a, a, a job or whether you're retired or whatever, there's, there's always something to do. I listen to, I listen to all my friends now. The, the phone call that I've gotten used to getting from my high school friends and college friends is, guess what? I said, I know, you're retired. 
Yes, I've heard it already from way too many people, and I don't want to hear it anymore. But I hear from retired people that they are busier when they're retired than they ever were when they were not, because there are grandchildren, and there are needs and wants in volunteerism and everything else. So the, the whole notion of being pulled in all these directions really it makes us even more in need of centering prayer to get focused. And then, of course, he goes on to say, to escape whatever is in prospect and stand secure before the Son of Man. To escape whatever is in prospect, because this stuff is going to happen. Every single day, things are going to happen that make you crazy. And he and uses the word secure, and I like that. You know, you think of secure, you think of a bank vault or a Brinks truck. But secure is when you really are secure in your life, your self-worth, and, and your, your self-image, all of that stuff. That's so very, very important. I've come to know, as I've gotten older, I look at people and, and friends as they've gotten aged, and I think about so many people who, who have insecurities, you know? So many people who have never developed a really good sense of self-worth, self-esteem. It's amazing what harm that can do to people if they're not really secure in that. That's why the role of parenting is so important to reinforce that. And then, again, the word is there before the Son of Man. So we stand before the Lord every single day. If you're going to come down the aisle, as most of you will, to receive the Eucharist, well, you're standing before the Lord in front of the tabernacle in church, but the Lord also travels in here. The Lord is in here every single day. Because, again, if the Lord weren't in here, you, you wouldn't have the strength to escape those other things. How many of us have looked within ourselves in a moment of challenge and said, please help me through this. Please stand with me in this. And it could come at any time. And it's always not convenient when the phone rings and the voice on the other end is in trouble some way or other, right? And then you look sometimes, well, maybe, maybe we're looking up because we want that vision, but you really want to look within and say, okay, you know, I've, I've got to go and there's this, challenging situation before me, stand with me, Lord. Please, please stand with me. So there's, there's all this wonderful information in here about preparing ourselves in Advent for the coming of Christ. And prayer, prayer is that first and foremost kind of preparation. Um, it says here, your ransom is at hand. Stand up straight, raise your heads. Well, the ransom, of course, is Christ dying on the cross for our sins. It's, it's interesting that all of the whole salvation history is here. The, the preparation in Advent is, of course, for the coming of Christ at Christmas, but that's done. Christ in Christmas is done. Christ on the cross is done. Christ's life on earth is finished. But the promise of eternal salvation, that's where we dwell every single day. We're aware historically that all that's done and over with. And we're going to welcome Christ at Christmas. But as it says here, it says your ransom is near. Well, the ransom has been paid. You know, you pay ransom when somebody gets kidnapped. Well, the ransom for sins has been paid by Christ dying on the cross. So in a way, we prepare ourselves to celebrate not just Christ, but all of salvation history. In the beginning, we sang that song, O come, O come, Emmanuel, ransom captive Israel. And you, you look at the words and everything. So... There, there's always a celebration of all of salvation history in every, cel every celebration in church. We have particular days. We have Christmas. We have Easter. We have Feasts of the Blessed Mother. All of it points to one thing, salvation for us all. There are historical moments where we stop time, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, and all those. We stop time like we did for Thanksgiving Day, and we celebrate in a particular way for a particular reason. But church is different because everything we celebrate, all these feasts that come along all year long, they, they're really the same celebration, which is that, that cross, Christ on that cross. That's what we celebrate every time we have any kind of celebration whatsoever. You know, we'll put up the manger and we'll put up all the decorations as we've begun and everything else. But the reality is, it's really all about salvation history. And these are moments in time in the life of Christ 
that we would like to stop and remember. We would like to stop and remember them with prayer and the lighting of the Advent wreath and the blessing and everything else. But it's about salvation history. And that's why this reading from Luke um, is, is so powerful in terms of, of, you know, what Jesus came to do for us. Stand up straight, raise your heads. Your ransom is at hand. There isn't much more, really, except that all of us, um, each in our own way, should maybe do a little something extra in these days before Christmas. You know, in Lent, we, we, we arrive at Lent and the whole notion is, you know, give something up, whatever that might be. Well, in Advent, it's taking on something, not giving it up. It's taking on a spirit of preparation and the prayer that goes with it to welcome Christ into our hearts, into our homes, into our lives, so that we can escape those moments when we are being tried and tested so that we can stand secure before the Son of Man. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We place our prayers and our petitions before Almighty God, and our response is, hear us. That communities support family life with safe housing, quality medical care, and good schools. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us that members of this assembly seek meaningful ways to prepare, prepare for the Lord's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. hear us. For those who generously share their time, talent, and treasure, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us. For the homebound, for those in rehabilitation, and for those in hospice care, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us. For those who are in need of our prayers and all those who have asked us to pray for them and for all whose names appear on the sick list in our parish bulletin, may God fill their lives with healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. For all who have died to rise with Christ in eternal light, especially Trinidad Baldo, Cynthia Clark McNamara, Rochina Abramo, Barbara Fantosi, Antoine Kirsner, for whom this Mass is offered. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is, is with, with thee, and blessed, blessed art thou among, amongst women, women, and blessed, blessed is, is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for pray us for sinners, sinners now and at the again. hour of our death. Yeah. Amen. Our Lady of Consolation, pray for us.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we may gather from among the gifts you give us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father and Eternal God. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, opening for us the way to eternal salvation. When he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for the day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. Added to that, the angels and saints, thrones and dominions, hosts and powers of heaven, sing the great hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one people by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to a fullness of charity. With Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, clergy, religious, the entire people, your son has gained for you. Remember as well, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. From all evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant to all of us here the peace and unity of your kingdom in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
These are announcements and milestones for this week and the uh, past week. We hope everyone had a blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, we saved our Thanksgiving treats for you on the way out the door. You can imagine what they are. Um, just take one or two or however many you would like to. Kids get some. I'm quite certain that, um, uh, I, you know, I, I was in, have you been to the new shop, right? It's, uh, it's like buying groceries in an aircraft hangar. <laughs> and if you forget something on this side of the store, they should have benches to rest as you go back to the, the dairy section. And, and I had my hand on the, I'm making dinner for five people because my brother-in-law and sister went to see his mom in North Carolina. And um, I, had, I was by the 12 and 14 pound turkeys and I, I couldn't do it. My, mother, I'm chan my mother's channeling me even though she's not here anymore. So I, I moved down to the, the 14, 16 pounders. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And finally, I was able to stop at the 20 pound. I made 20 pound turkey for five people. <laughs> Does anybody want any turkey? Okay, just thought I'd ask. Okay, we have the beautiful giving tree here. Um, the bulletin has details. We did this last year. Uh, we thank you to those who took uh, the tags and purchased for the less fortunate, but this makes it a little bit different. Um, we happy birthday to Patrick Trenikos Jr. He celebrated his birthday on Wednesday. Um, that's a crazy dog. I know that dog. Uh, we wish him much health and happiness. Porch boards are available. If you'd like a last minute gift, it's amazing how many people have actually wanted those, which is great. Forms are at the entrance to the church. Holiday raffle tickets are still available. We thank those who have returned them. It's been a great response. Um, still more to come. If you haven't, please help us. We're halfway to the goal of 500. Uh, remember, you have to be uh, in it to win it, as they say. Uh, we have birthdays to celebrate this week. Uh, Connie Gilmore, is she here? No. We have uh, Joe Krause, he's not here. Angie Armstrong, and we have Rosemary Johnson, who I think is here. Where are you, Rosemary? Okay, happy birthday. A happy uh, and a happy uh, um, 35th wedding anniversary to you both. Congratulations. Let's see here. Um, our schedule for the Christmas Masses will be next weekend. Uh, get well and birthday wishes to Steve Reinhardt. I think he is at the next Mass, generally speaking. Get well, get feeling better. He's been a little under the weather lately. The calendars are available at the entrances. Please take them home if you would like one. We wish our dear friend and new parishioner, Jerry Speziali, a happy 85th birthday. And there he is with his son. Okay. Um, happy 36th wedding anniversary to Rob and Pat Moore. Pa Rob plays the music at the uh, 5 o'clock. They were both here last night, and we wish them a happy anniversary. Uh, as you saw tonight, we met, today we made some changes in the procession. We have so many people tuning in, so many new parishioners joining. It's so wonderful. And we have altar servers returning next week, which will be great. So we're going to have a more elaborate procession and a more nice display up here. Um, and uh, so we're going to do things a little more um, for especially all you folks out there. Any other milestones or announcements this weekend? Anybody have um, birthday, anniversaries? Okay. To all of you out there in television land, if you have a birthday or an anniversary, happy time to you too. So that's all I can say. Please stand. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebration is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. <laughs>